Longtime PBS NewsHour anchor Jim Lehrer has moderated more presidential debates than anyone else. He details his experiences in his new book, Tension City. Belva Davis spoke with him earlier this week. Jim, you have moderated 11 presidential debates, one of them a vice presidential debate. How did you become the favorite moderator of these kinds of forums? Well, I would love to be able to sit here and tell you that it's because of my brilliance and my whatever. Uh, you know, the practical, the practical reason is that uh, it's the nature of what we do at the, at, at the news hour. And, uh, the, the way we talk to people and interview people and run discussions, I think uh, it was less about me uh, than it was about the way we do things. And, uh, and also it came down to a practical matter a few times when the, the uh, uh, representatives of the candidates and the debate committee, they couldn't agree on anybody else. So uh, I would like to think it's uh, all about me, but it isn't. At one, at one season, you did all of the debates. That's right, that's right. Why? <laughs> well, the first time it happened, they agreed uh, on my doing the first one. They asked me to do it. This was uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, 96, Bob Dole and, uh, and uh, Bill Clinton. And I agreed to do it. And then they apparently went on talking, and they couldn't agree on who was going to do the other two debates. So finally, these guys started yelling at each other. And finally, they said, well, look, we can agree on, this is what I was told about, told later, we can agree on Larry. Let's see if he'll do the all, all three of them. We can, we can go to bed at night and get this thing over with. So they called me and asked me if I would do them. I said, sure. So they were, that, that was it. <laughs> Well, your book is called Tension City, so that meant that was three times in that season that you could go through this. There's a favorite story that you tell in the book uh, about uh, the first uh, uh, President Bush and his uh, advice or his comments about what's involved in doing one of these debates. Yeah, well, the title comes comes from that. Tension I, City. I asked, yeah, I asked him, you know, some great penetrating question like, uh, what were they like, Mr. <laughs> President? And he said, all oh, those big time things, Jim, they were big, they were Tension City. And uh, I had had a title, a working title on the book for two and a half years. It was called Moderator. And the editor finally called me. They were, the book was all done, ready to go. And the, uh, med the uh, editor called me and said, we're not sure Moderator is a great title. And I said, well, that, I was very defensive about it. And, uh, and I said, well, that is the title. <laughs> and he said, well, let me ask you a question, Jim. Would you buy a book? with a title, Moderator. <laughs> now, okay, I'll think about it. And I remembered what George H.W. Bush had told me because I was able to interview just about all of the candidates for president and vice president who had uh, uh, done these televised debates and I was able to talk to them about their experiences and I remembered that, that line from George H.W. Bush. He hated the debates. He just, mm -hmm. you know, in fact, I later asked him in that same interview, post-debate interview, uh, did, should they be required uh, a required part of the political process said no should be up to the candidates if it was up to a candidate if a candidate thought it would be helpful yes if a candidate thought it would be harmful no it should be up to the candidates alone and only the candidates decide whether they're going to be debates or not uh, well a good line from president bush but you had one that really resonated with me and that was all to do with a knife <laughs> oh yeah well i i my comparison was walking Moderating one of those debates is like uh, walking down the blade of a very sharp knife and you take one false step and you get cut, you get hurt. And uh, I always felt that way. And it's not just the moderator, it's for everybody involved. The stakes are really, really high. And the, for the candidates and their, their, their handlers as well as uh, the moderator, obviously. President Bush, too, was criticized for looking at his watch. Why was that such a big deal? Well, it's an interesting question, Belva, because uh, Bill Clinton, in fact, said uh, had a better answer than anybody to that. I asked him, why, why did that matter? Because he, he said, because it, it fulfilled a perception of President Bush. Oh, somehow he was disconnected from the people. Remember, there had been a story that he didn't know how to work uh, uh, a checkout counter at a grocery store. You know, he was above all this sort of stuff. And that he was, the whole process kind of bored him and all that. And, and, and looking at the watch, according to as Bill Clinton said, if he, Clinton, had looked at his watch, or if Ross Perot, who was the other candidate who was in that debate, if, if either one of them had looked at their watch, it, nobody would have paid any attention to it. But because it was George H.W. Bush, and there was already this perception about it. it seemed, this seemed to feed 
the perception, and that's why it hurt. Mm -hmm. the, were there moments ever when you were <laughs> unsure you were going to pull it off? I know there's one chapter where you, you write about sitting there looking at your prompter copy, your teleprompter copy, where you get what you have to say, and there was nothing there. That's right. They had, they, they had covered it with a piece of black cloth. Uh, so the background shot at the beginning when the candidates walked in, you wouldn't see the prompter because the prompter, came, the camera came through a slit. And I looked up to say good evening and they were supposed to pull the sheet away and they hadn't pulled it away. So all I saw was black. Your opinions of debate, do they serve a purpose? Do they really help the public Absolutely. make a good decision? Absolutely, they do. It's the only time, Belva, during a presidential campaign where the candidates, same candidates are on the same stage at the same time talking about something that matters. And you get to take the measure of the person, whether you are for them or against them, whether you like their views on a particular issue or not, you can have an impression. Uh, they kind of judge the temperament of these people, judge whether or not you could see this person sitting uh, at a desk at the Oval Office making a decision about uh, another Katrina situation or another 9-11 uh, situation or sending uh, Americans to war. Before we close down, you've yeah. been making some changes. You've changed the news hour. You're there on Fridays now. Mm -hmm. What's the next evolution? Well, it's, uh, it's probably, probably going to be more of the same. I'm very keen on doing what I can off camera to try to make sure that public broadcasting remains vital in the serious news and public affairs area, not only nationally with the news hour, but locally as well. I think that, that what we're doing in the news hour should be done locally by in every public television station in the country. I think journalism needs, needs some help and these newspapers are hurting and public broadcasting needs to step up to the plate and uh, and do its part. We're, pre we're prepared to do it. It's our mission and we've got to do it. Okay, Jim Lehrer, thank you very much. Thank you.